guys, welcome back to our channel. Or welcome to our channel. I'm Gianna and she is Adriana. And today we are at a special area, Old Sturbridge Village. And it's really fun where you can do all sorts of activities and view the olden days in this area. Let's go. Have you ever wanted to step back in time? Experience life as it was to better understand the world around us today or even to touch, hear, and taste history. Good day and welcome to Old Sturbridge Village, an outdoor history museum dedicated to telling the story of life in rural New England in the early 19th century. It is a story about everyday people, people like you. The village is a recreation of a small New England community in the decade of the 1830s, which was, like today, a time of social, political, and technological you to engage all your senses as you explore the work and pastimes, challenges, and celebrations of early America. As you talk with the costumed historians, you will see throughout in the village's homes, farms, mills, and craft shops. Our staff, our educators, not actors, who will help you experience lively encounters with the past. They will help you forge connections between your present day life and the lives of rural 19th century women. We tell is not just about history, but about today and tomorrow. Okay, guys, we are in a play area called A Kid's Story. So it's supposed to be a replica of what it would be like in the olden days with fun games. Let's head over to the barn. We can see a, a pig right here, a cow, some food. And some other things, like a little underneath area, and a jug thingy. I forget what it's called, but this is really neat. And there's an area where you can milk the cow. Now let's show you the house area. Really nice. It's like a kitchen replica. Oh, yeah, guys, look, you've got like all like stuff right there. like what women or men would use to wear. And there's also these cool little things right here. And little bats. <coughs> <laughs> and this is what would, your house would probably look like if you worked on a farm. You would have a table, some china, or some cups, a little thing. I don't, I think this might have been for holding spices, a fireplace, some glass, and some food, hose, and replicas of cup for sisters, and a bucket. And maybe like this little thing right here, this stuff? That would probably be used like to where you put one. laundry or something. If you work on a farm, you probably have crops. And this is what you would use a lot in the area. And it's real cool. It has some china, nice china, backs, and like you use, and a replica of a cheese, what cheese would usually look like. And a spinning wheel. And what? there's some things that you could do for that. Downstairs area, then you have this 
black now. And it's closed for right now, guys. But we also have a room right here. If you if you were back in the day in the 1830s, if you were planning to live by yourself, this would be a perfect Ooh. size for you. Small house. And then we have a room right here. You have your petticoats that dress up stuff and some and kitchen supplies maybe or a candle holder. And there's also this little thing. Do you wanna do you wanna read this? Okay. Regular folk in Early New England, about one of the in five families lived in homes. The small making the most of what space they had. Some owned their homes, but many rented. Who lived in such houses? Far farm families and and lab labs, tradesmen and factory workers. Most were Anglo Anglo Americans of of modest meaning. Well, some were recent immigrants from Ireland or native and Africa, African Americans. Some young married couples had small houses, but with the intention of adding as on as their families grew, but others just do with what they could afford. Yet by the early 1800s, even poorer families could enjoy the, some luxuries, such as paint, wallpaper, and important dishes. And this is a really cool room. You have some candles. And you have some like pottery and stuff. Really cool, guys. And, and like, you have also, a you washing have some, board. Like, little things. So let's head to the next house. This is really cool. I think this might have been for like when you had a meeting to talk about stuff. Especially during the regular revolution. This was the meeting house. Like, Maybe so like this was like when the Declaration of Independence was wrote or something like that. And then you have a little stage right here. Like this is the fire set person. Then you have rows. This is actually pretty cool. I love this. So there's 12 benches in all. It would be cool if we could go upstairs. But it's a I love free. It's just it amazing. It's not a church. It's, it's a church. called this building a meeting house. This one was built in Sturbridge Village in 1832 and moved to the museum in 1947. Buildings like this were used every Sunday for worship by members of the local sorry guys, and church. There were morning and afternoon services, each over two hours long. Although Christmas and Easter services were very rare, there was Always a special Thanksgiving morning service. This is a real cool area, and there's a chandelier. The chicken. house. And I 
think the pattern is it goes throughout the years of what it will look like or it is what it looks like at that time. So, yeah. Would you rather live in like the modern day world or like the I would love to live in this time. Can we go in here? Yeah. It is the whole Caribbean sun. Yeah. Can we get to town? Well, you can go upstairs for this one, I think. Oh my gosh, you guys, you can go upstairs for this one. Look at it! This is like a mansion size. You can go in all the way. This is like a writing desk or like a law desk. This is good for a job area. They have their own. I'm not going upstairs. I will. Wait, okay. let's go up here first. Now we have like a kitchen. Now. Now we have a kitchen. The fire actually lights. The fire actually lights. How are you today? Very good. So this is the parsonage. This is where the minister would live. And this would be a very busy house because mm. people would be coming to him for counseling. There might be a ladies group, the charitable society meeting in here in our parlor in the afternoon. And being the head of the house, I have to make sure that everyone is fed and that we might even have some, um, like a snack for afternoon tea. So over here in our tin baker, we are making some hard gingerbread, which there's a receipt or as you would say recipe here. And it's, it's flour and butter and ginger and caraway seeds and a little rose water because we didn't have vanilla back then. And it's all sitting in this pan in our tin baker and it is cooking up. When this browns just a bit, we'll be taking that out it'll be finished. Now it's rather cheap <laughs> bit of food to put together. This one is actually of the era. It's running. 
so This would be a dirt floor, but since we have a basement below, we did we turn it into wood. Oh. Well, this shop was actually moved here from Bolton, Mass. Uh -huh. It was built, put back together. In fact, there's a picture of it over here as they're reassembling the building. They brought every stone, they even ground up a lot of the mortar and used it over. They wanted to be as authentic as possible, but because they wanted to have a basement down below, them, it would have had a dirt floor back in the day. Do they have, some, have someone special to do that, or do you just always one for it like the bellows that you're doing now? You mean they have somebody special I mean, to I pull the bellows? You have to do, does he have to do the work and the bellows? Uh, well, unless you have an apprentice or something, or maybe your son or yeah. child would come in and, uh, and do it, just because they got to learn to do things. Hi, come on in. Welcome to the Bixby House. Feel free to walk around. Nothing you can't do is eat the food, but you can look at everything else. Um, and this is a house that was owned by a blacksmith, his wife, and three daughters. And those three daughters were really, really helpful in um, adding to the family uh, income, adding what they're doing to today is braiding straw. And if you braid enough of it, you can go to the store and get credit for it. So how old are you young ladies? Ten and she's seven. seven. Okay, you, uh, you, if you could learn to do it, you could do it. Um, but you both know how to sew. Yeah. Yeah? How about knit? No, I don't know. I Not yet. <laughs> Not yet? Well, sewing's really important because even though we get all this lovely cotton, you still have to sew everything. Do you know, do you know where your room would be? If you look back there, you'll look up to, um, in, uh, you can look in the attic. This is the perfect house for you two young ladies. Whoa. <sighs> yeah, I wish I could take you up there to see it. It's just the same as it was when the Bixby girls lived here. So they had cows. Um, and making and I'm almost at the same point in a shoe I'm repairing. So I've half sold and healed this shoe and I've got, you know, as soon as I'm done with this one, I have the mate to do. 
1855. Two buildings and we actually moved it one piece. Basically created it up to put it on the back of the truck and moved it. We had pressed to do that today because of some of the bridges and the power lines. This yellow house over here on your right is the Finch House. This came out of Willimantic, Connecticut. This started out like a small house out in front of a little two-room townhouse. And as the family grew, they added on to it three times. They do chickens. The original structure dates back to 1737. They added on in 1751. Again in the 1770s, the last edition of the This house over here to your right is the oldest house in the village. This is the Benno House. It's back to 1724. That was donated to Old Sturbridge Village by the Canton Historical Society. The village depicts that as the house of an elderly widow and her daughters. I think they're living on a spinning and weaving and pushing and needle sewing. We do a lot of wool dyeing and textile demonstrations. Even the furniture here is old by 1830. Oh, 1946. That's a collection of early America. Now they're two brothers. Now look at Puccini Well. Out of the Wells family, the old American Hospital over at Southbridge. Most of the buildings that you've seen around here today were brought in from other parts of New England to recreate a very small slice of the ancient We are in the tavern area. By the way, downstairs is a restaurant, but here is a area of what a tavern probably looked like. And it also includes a dining hall and a fun game so you can play checkers with your mate. But we're going to head to the ice cream shop. Let's go. This is how you would usually get your water from a source, but you have to keep on pumping it until you have a good amount of water. And that's our dad right there. You want to try, Adriana? Guys, we are at a Salem-styled mansion, so let's go from here to try to get into the house. Yay. This way. No, this way. As you can see, you have a little shady area right here. Well, it's a block. It's a block. And it says this garden is dedicated to the Salem town townhouse is dedicated to Gertrude Wells, Vernon, 1999, 19, 2011. 2011. A lifelong and steadfast benefactor of the museum. And we have a nice cathedral over here. And also we have a house right there. So let's go in. Parlor. Maybe that's a picture of him, JJ. Hey. How you doing? Fine, how are you today? We're good. How are you today? Good. Well, this is the townhouse. You can see they were really well to do, but this is a farmhouse. It's and a nice house. Yes, it is. Um, they were showing off a bit, but they were farming as a business. Yeah. How old is the house? 
It's built in 1796. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Maybe you see upstairs the ballroom. <gasps> no way. And Mr. Tom had six daughters, uh, and so they turned part of it into bedrooms. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. these glasses. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. And guys, we have to go because we are going to be leaving the park soon. But thank you guys for watching. Make Bye. sure you give a thumbs up and comment down below if you like this. And subscribe and hit that gray bell. Bye guys.